I'm not even going to share any of his story before he comes up. What I can tell you is that he's had the dream, the struggle, and today his organization is doing millions of dollars in sales per month. I want you to welcome to the stage, as if it were your first time, Mr. Andy Dooley. Come on up. January 2nd, 1998, I am 10 years old, standing in line to buy milk in Albania, 5 o'clock in the morning. My dad had been there in line for three hours, so I came there so he could go back to work. And I was there for several hours, and I was three people away when the cashier said there is no more milk. People left. I had a young sister at home, one year old, and I remember just in tears asking her, it's gotta be another bottle. There's gotta be some more milk left. She said, no, sorry. I remember standing in line to buy bread and most days the truck did not even come with bread. I remember most nights going to bed hungry. We didn't have running water 24-7. We didn't have power 24-7 that we so take for granted here. The shower you took this morning, we had water two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. The power, hot or cold, we had electricity just a few hours a day. And if anybody complained because of the harsh regime, because of communism, they would kill your whole family. So forget about complaining. You couldn't even think about it. The whole country was very isolated. As a kid growing up, I heard of this thing called the American dream. And in Albania, we did not have the Albanian dream. And we're across the beach from Italy and and Greece, and I never heard of the Italian dream or, or a Greek dream. So I begged my dad. I said, Dad, please help me get to America. I begged him. I said, Dad, if you help me get there, if you give me a chance, I will pay you back. I will help the family. I will help support you guys. Um, April of 98, I uh, applied for a visa. Over 50 people applied that day, and over uh, only three people got it. And I was one of the three. Yeah. I think God had a plan. So I came to the States. Uh, my plane landed in Atlanta, Georgia, big airport. I, it, it seemed like the airport was bigger than my small town. And I went to a McDonald's, go figure that. And as soon as I landed, I was hungry, I was thirsty. And I went there, and the lady, I, I did not speak any English, nothing. The lady there did not understand what I was trying to say, so she kind of blew me off, and I turned around, and I thought, what's another day going to bed hungry and thirsty? Embarrassed, just left. And came to the dorms, um, learned English. I figured if I want to be immersed in the culture, I have to learn the language. A few months later, the dorms closed for the summer for a couple of weeks. So I got into a small rental apartment. I slept on the floor for the first few weeks. I had some sheets. I had some, you know, blankets. I didn't have a bed. I had not discovered Craigslist then. <laughs> and I, uh, I heard that to become free in this country, you go to school for four years, you get a degree, you put in 40 years worth of work, 
you make $40,000 a year, which for me was a fortune back then, and you retire good. So I did what I heard. I went to college. The problem was three years later, I was still a freshman. And my, my GPA was 1.6. So I dropped out of school and I delivered pizzas for a living. And a couple years later, it just dawned on me. I thought, I didn't come to America to be a pizza delivery driver. I can do that back home and be with my family. So I did what most people do. You go back to school when you struggle for more education. So I went back to school. Then I got a letter a little bit later that said, unless you can bring your GPA over 2.0, you will get expelled. So I dropped college, full-time delivering pizzas. I had two jobs. And at this time, desperately, you know, looking for an opportunity. I'd applied for so many different jobs. No one gave me a chance, no experience, uh, no degree, no connections. And all I wanted is just an opportunity. I bought a book, How to Interview for Jobs, but uh, that didn't get me anywhere. <laughs> and someone caught me. At the, at the right time in my life. And they gave me a DVD about a network marketing opportunity. And thank God they kept it simple because if they had done a long presentation, if they had tried to talk me into it, I would have thought I, I can't do that. But because a simple invitation that spoke some life and hope to me, and they gave me the DVD and said, hey, you would be great at this. Check it out. I asked them some more questions. They said, all the information is right there. You'll be impressed. So I go home. I watch the DVD. And the stories there touched my heart. I said, wow, could this be it? So I start in network marketing. And again, all I knew was how to uh, knock on somebody's door and maybe talk to the kids and talk about the dog or the pets and smile and hope for a dollar tip. That's about the only skill I had. So when I got started, all I knew was a few other uh, pizza delivery drivers. So the first few years were a struggle, which I realized that. I knew it was going to be a struggle. And, uh, but I made a commitment that I will be in until I learn what I need to learn to win. And I figured there's got to be a set of principles that bring success. And if I learn them and if I follow them, maybe I'll get where those guys are. And um, when I first joined uh, the business, I, uh, I had a car that honked by itself. Beep, beep, you know, one of those things. And I uh, didn't have a bicycle uh, for, uh, I had a bicycle for a year and a half in the States. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, one time I almost got into an accident uh, trying to buy groceries with a bicycle. And, and uh, so uh, it was pretty bad. But, uh, and a friend of mine at the time gave me the car. And uh, he said, uh, if you keep it a few more years, uh, it could be considered a classic <laughs> if it still drives. Old car, uh, long, it sounded like a boat, poo -poo, you know. And um, in opportunity meetings, I had to park far because I was embarrassed if the car started honking. Uh, I would have, uh, you know, talk about dreamy. Some days I'm going to be, and then there's a car honking, but um, <laughs> crazy. I, uh, first time it happened, it was uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I, uh, I was sleeping, deep sleep, and the car starts honking. I, I, you wake up wondering what just happened. So I, I remember picking up the cell phone. Oh, it's not the cell phone. I, I picked up the home phone. It's not the home phone. I ran at the door. All this within five seconds. I opened the door. There is nobody there. And then it dawned on me, it's got to be the car. So I go outside, and it's the car. I had to take the battery out. And uh, that's how it stopped. Uh, but um, I struggled for a while. And then somebody dragged me to an event like this. I came at this event a few years ago, sitting in the back, and uh, it just blew my mind. I think I evolved that weekend. I, I left here a different person. I remember talking to Richard Brooke and uh, during a break and just wondering, could this be for real? Could this really happen? And the guy, the way he, and I've always said that the way he listened to me, 
he communicated my potential. I still remember to this day, a few years later, how he listened, you know, just the whole attention. And he said, personal development, you've got to grow. I mean, if you want to build a business, if you want to grow a business, you've got to grow yourself. So I bought a bunch of books and a bunch of CDs at that time with money I didn't have. And uh, that's where my journey really began. And uh, I can stand here today just, uh, just totally, totally in awe of what has happened. And, and uh, I kept my promise with my dad. I flew them here February of this year, both mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I flew them to the States. I took them across the country, six weeks vacation, coast to coast, five-star resorts, everything. And then at that last evening, I told them the whole journey. I told them the whole story. I took them to that first apartment. I said, here's where I first lived, and then here's my second apartment, and here's the college I tried to attend, and here is uh, my first job. Here is the area where I delivered pizzas and just the whole journey. At the end of the day, at the end of the whole thing, my, my parents were both in tears. And dad looked at me in the eye and said, son, I'm proud of you. Great job. First time I ever heard that, yeah. All things are possible. I flew them back again a week ago. We're taking them, I'm taking them to the Caribbeans. I've retired them. And I've increased the quality of my sister's life. My twin sister no longer has to work. My youngest sister now is having a baby. She doesn't have to worry about money anymore. And I'm sharing with you the story to let you know that if it can happen for an immigrant who started broke with no English, no network, no skills, nothing, if it can happen for me, it can truly happen for every single person in this room. Yeah. <clears throat> in closing, how can you go from crisis to comfort? I know that a lot of people here don't have to worry about, am I going to have power tonight? Am I going to be able to uh, take a shower tonight? Am I going to go to bed hungry tonight? Most of you don't worry about that. So most people, you know, go from crisis to comfort and they stop there. They stop there. You know, they, they get there, they're comfortable, they make some money, they got the car. Few people go from comfort to extraordinary, to true freedom, to wealth. Not just about money, but to true wealth. And it's not, the motivation doesn't come from the cars and the money, but the motivation comes for making a contribution in other people's lives. When you know that this is possible for everybody that has a dream, everybody that, that, that wants to have a better life, that anybody that wants to make something of themselves. So those people that make the decision to impact lives and say, I live for the stories. I'm not just going to impact my team or my company, but they catch the vision of the faculty. They catch the vision of the leaders here. They want to impact the whole profession. They want to impact the whole world. The history is filled with people that, that change the world and change the next generation. If they could do it, why not you? Keep the believing up. Uh, always believe. Never give up. All things are possible. God bless. Thank you. All right, Mr. Andy Dooley.